My name is Daniel. I am part of the team that supports cloud functions for Firebase. And today, I'm super excited to talk to you about observability in cloud functions for Firebase. This topic is near and dear to my heart because I was part of the site reliability engineering team when I first joined Google. And you may have seen or read this book, but site reliability engineering team is obsessed with you know, operating the production software as efficiently, as, as reliably as possible. And while in Firebase, we love talking about how easy it is to build your service, we often don't talk that much about you know, how do you operate this thing. So, um, and, and, and I think GCP, which the platform that Cloud Functions for Firebase is built on top of offers amazing tools for operating your software. So I want to do that. And I think the best way to do this is with a story. So I want you to meet Suna. She is a developer at an e-commerce company. And she is a Firebase enthusiast just like us. She walks into the office one day, and the PM has a message for her. Hey, our customers love discounts. Can we have a feature where we calculate the total price with the discount supply? And like a good engineer, Suna says, you got it. She thinks Cloud Functions for Firebase is a perfect, fe fe um, perfect fit for this feature because one, it offers zero maintenance. It scales automatically up and down. She doesn't have to think about the infrastructure too much. It's private and secure, which is important in this case because discount information is you know, sensitive. We don't want any customers to just access and read the discount information. You need a secure environment. Cloud Functions for Firebase offers that. Finally, she knows she'll be productive with the SDK, the CLI, and the emulator that all work seamlessly together. So she writes her function in the V2 that we just um, talked about earlier today. Um, and you don't have to read the whole thing. Just let's focus on two business logics. One is calculating the total price. So you get a list of product IDs that you want to calculate the total for. We have the products collection with documents that specify the price of the product. So we're going to generate document references, grab all the documents at once, and then calculate the total by you know, iterating through the documents that we fetched. That's one. The important piece and the interesting piece is the discount calculation. Imagine having collection of discounts. And each discount describes the discounted amount and the products that it applies to. So for each product that she has, she's going to look up the discounts collection, find the discounts that match this product, add it all up, and do that again for all the products that she has. So she wrote the function. She has run the emulator to test her logic. She deploys it to her QA project. She even does a um, production launch, and there's a QA there. She's happy. Everything's working great. A launch. High fives. She's getting kudos. She's feeling great. All right, so here's a twist. Next day, she walks in, PM messages her, hey, I'm getting this call from our big customer. They say their checkout process is taking a long time. Can you take a look? I had this feeling, a lot of you know, people reporting bugs, issues, and I, I have this five stages of production issue. First, you're in denial. It's like, code is perfect. What are you talking about? Maybe they're, maybe they're wrong. Maybe they're on a 3G network. And then you get a little angry. It's like, who is this silly customer anyway? Like, do I even have to care about this customer? You start bargaining. It's like, hey, like 10 seconds, not too long, right? Like, in the grand scheme of things, everything's cool. You get a little depressed, like, oh, I'm the worst coder in the world. I'm the worst software engineer in the world. Finally, you get to acceptance. You, have, you, you figure out that there, there could be a problem, and you're going to go search for the problem. So where do we start? I think a good place to start is with the dashboard. So there is a thing called four golden signals that the SRE folks um, um, like to talk about. And these are the request latency, the utilization of CPU and memory, request count, and the errors. And, and she notices something on the request latency. The 99 percentile is indeed super slow. It's taking over seven seconds to respond. And when you're using Cloud Functions for Firebase, you get all this for free because you're running on Google Cloud Platform. So with these dashboards, she has confirmed the issue. Yeah, the, the customer is not kidding. Like, there is an issue with our backend. But you don't have any incriminating evidences yet. Now you start to think. Like, you built this code. So maybe you can think through and find the bug that you, um, by doing that. So you think about your source code. Maybe there's a bug somewhere. You also think about the infrastructure where your code is deployed, right? Like, did everything work perfectly in development? Maybe like when we applied or deployed it to Google Cloud Functions, maybe this is the cool start that people are talking about. Maybe Firestore is having a bad day. So you're generating hypotheses about like what is going on, like what is the problem? Finally, like 
I think I like to jump back into logs. I don't, I'm, I don't know if people have done this. I do this all the time where like we write logs to understand the code that we write, right? Like how is it actually running when it's running on the CPU? But the problem is that Suna didn't write any logs. She didn't expect any logs. Like logs are intentional. They're ex explicit. Like you're leaving breadcrumbs for yourself. In this case, Suna didn't leave any because she, she thought everything was good. So let's recap. We looked at dashboard. We confirmed the issue. We, we thought about our code. We thought about the infrastructure that is deployed on. We have a hunch. We have hypothesis. And as for logs, it wasn't very helpful. And I would say like, the cloud function that Suna deployed is still a black box. Like, even though she wrote the code, the business logic, she's relying on like, libraries that she didn't write. She's relying on infrastructure that she doesn't know the full detail of. Only like, a couple of Googlers probably know that. It's still a black box. And this is where concept of observability comes in. And it's such a new hot topic, I couldn't find an Oxford dictionary definition for it. But there was a book that was published earlier this year called Observability Engineering. And they had a great definition that I want to share with you. Observability of a software system is a measure of how well you can understand and explain your system, no matter how novel or bizarre. And I want us to focus on the fact that observability is not like a set of technology or checkboxes. It's a relationship between you as the operator and the software that is running in production. So if it's not making sense to you, then it's not observable. So Suna learns about this topic. I want to make my service observable. How do we do that? Well, I think the easiest place to get started is just write some more logs, right? Like we, we talked about how like you rewrite logs to understand how it's running in the software system. So she's going to use the handy dandy console log that I hope people are familiar with. And she's going to time how long it takes to fetch these Firestore documents. Maybe that's where the problem is. So you have this log, but it's a lot of logs. So she's getting a lot of requests. It's just a bunch of text, right? Like we're not really good at processing megabytes of text and getting insights from it. Um, so how do we get some help here? Well, Suna figures out that she can write, um, you can import the logger that is included with Firebase Functions SDK, and instead of writing strings, she's going to write objects, um, these JavaScript objects. When, when you do that, this technique is called structure logging. So not only is you know, JavaScript object readable by humans, it's also readable by machine and understood by machine. So when you're using cloud logging, you can now make, um, so this is the logging payload that you'll get. You will see that the JSON payload has the object of, you know, we calculated, we have a message, and we have the time it took to calculate this um, um, price or discount. And cloud logging allows you to write complex queries where you can filter by, hey, I want only logs that are greater than, or that took more than 500 milliseconds. This is going to help with the investigation that she's doing. And instead of having to write you know, regular expressions or like awk to like parse the logs, you can, you can le leverage the machine to help you make investigations go more smoothly. And what's great about it is that you can even create custom metrics. So you write your queries, and there will be a little button that says create custom metrics. When you do this, instead of having to integrate with cloud monitoring or Prometheus or what other monitoring tools that you're familiar with, you can just go ahead and easily dump this data, the structured data that you had, into Google Cloud Monitoring or you know, Prometheus that also is offered by Google Cloud Platform. So when Suna did this, she found that you know, the calcula she, she was able to graph the latency of how long it took to calculate the price, as well as how long it took to calculate the discount. She notices that, like, yeah, like the, the tail end behavior of calculating discount is super slow. Price is doing pretty OK. This is probably where the, the problem lies. So at this point, Suna has like honed in on a section of code that has the problem. So what do we do now? Do we go back and add more logs to get even more information about what's going on with our code? Maybe she's going to time exactly how long it took to make the Firebase query. Or maybe it's like in that for loop. So she's going to make logs after this. What I think Suna needs is a little cute dog with a camera. And I don't mean literally, but it, wouldn't it be nice if there was like an autonomous thing that would go and take a snapshot of the system state any, when, whenever anything interesting happens? So whenever a request comes in, you take a snapshot, maybe the timing information of what's going on. Maybe when you're making a third-party API call, you take a snapshot of the state. Basically, like writing logs, except doing it automatically by this little cute dog. Um, well, we can't have cute dogs running around the server room, but what we can have is traces and spans. So traces and spans are uh, another type of monitoring signal where each request has, uh, as you follow each request, 
And whenever anything significant happens, you're sort of taking a start and the end and any metadata that is associated that you want to put into each span. So in our case, we get this beautiful graph um, visualization of, you know, we got the request and then we started calculating the price, which issued a Firestore call, then we started calculating the discount, which was another set of Firestore call, and you get a nice visibility into what's actually happening in your service. So how do we get started with traces? I, I would recommend OpenTelemetry. OpenTelemetry is a vendor neutral, open specification and an implementation of all, all kinds of monitoring signals like logs, um, monitoring, and also traces. So traces is what I wanna focus on today. But it's built by you know, industry leading experts in the monitoring space and available in a lot of languages, including JavaScript, which is what we need. So let's take a brief look at how it happens. I'm gonna import OpenTelemetry in my code. I'm gonna start the SDK, and I'm gonna configure it that works with Google Cloud Functions, so I'm gonna include instrumentation. This is where the magic happens, where if you want, like these significant events that you want to automatically instrument, you can import by saying, hey, I want any HTTP request to be instrumented. I want any gRPC request to be instrumented. I want anything express that happen in, that is interesting to be automatically generating spans. You can add more, you can add less. This is what I picked, or this is what Suna picked. Um, we're also gonna look at the trace exporters. So when your service is generating spans, you want that data to be available in some service for analysis. I'm picking Google Cloud, or Suna is picking Google Cloud Trace, but there are other providers like Honeycomb and Lightstep who can also help you ingest these spans that are being generated and give you the analysis tool to investigate the problem. So her service is now instrumented, it's generating spans. What does it look like in Google Cloud Trace? Well, actually, one more, sorry. So you want to make sure that this is a Google Cloud Functions v2 function where it will send you a term or a sig term signal whenever the container is shutting down. And this is important because you know, when it shuts down, you want to make sure that all the spans that you have generated is exported to Google Cloud Trace in our case. So I want to make sure that I capture that. All right, so this is the good trace that I want to look at. She, she looked at some of the traces that are normal, like 99% of them are pretty fast. This is what's happening. Like she gets an HTTP request, she's making a Firestore call to calculate the price, calculate the discount, the whole thing took 50 milliseconds. Pretty good. What about the bad case? Uh-oh, this one took more than six seconds. You're seeing a lot more spans. Let's, let's take a look. We're making over 100 calls to Firestore and doing them in like a waterfall style? Oh no, it looks like when there are a lot of products that needs to be calculated, we're gonna make a sequential call to Firestore and make 100, more than 100 calls. That's why it's being slow. But once you know the issue, like it's easy to fix it, right? So this is the code that we had originally. Um, we're gonna apply two tricks. First, we're gonna use this um, operator in Firestore called array contains any. So instead of looking for discounts applied to a single product, we, we can have up to 10 products that are, we can look up all the discount that applies to 10 products at the same time. So instead of making 100 calls, we can only make 10 calls. Nice. Another thing that I think we should do is to, instead of having this waterfall sequential calls, why don't we just issue all the Firestore calls at the same time and have them come back. So I'm gonna do them concurrently by doing an async map over it and then doing a promise all to wait for all the responses to come back. She has deployed this code, she's looking for traces again, and what do we see? Exactly what we wanted, right? The request latency has reduced back to like 100 milliseconds. That's like six seconds to 100 milliseconds. Amazing stuff. We have only, we're only issuing 10 Firestore queries. Awesome. And we're doing them in, like in parallel instead of doing it in sequence. That's why we got this amazing speed up. Suno is happy, PM is happy, everyone's happy. Are you guys happy? Yeah. All right, so let's quickly recap. We, had, we started from a black box. We added some logging to make it more observable. We added structure logging to leverage the machines. You know, we should definitely use the machines for our benefit. Using cloud logging, understand structure logs, we can make custom metrics. Finally, we used OpenTelemetry to generate traces, which actually gave us the clues that we needed to debug our production issue. So that was like a really short snippet. It was super hard to follow. Check out the full example that we have on the function sample repo on GitHub. Go to like second gen and like it's ha it has a really explicit title called Instrumenting with Open Telemetry. I committed it yesterday. <laughs> so you should be able to see it there. 
And if you want to talk to me about this and you know, how you deal with your production issues, let me know. I'll be hanging out in the Firebase lounge right after this. So thank you, everyone. Thank you.